And I could not be more delighted that we have this young man, Jacob King, here. On the ninth day of my retreat, having gone in and just lived for several days in this beautiful sort of seed part of me, it was so clear and so simple and so easy and so beautiful. Uh, towards the end of day nine, I was bored and I just wanted something other than a meditation to do. So I wanted to watch a near-death experience on YouTube. I love near-death experiences. I watched exactly one, and it was the Jeff Mara podcast, and it was Mr. Jacob King, who is joining us tonight from Melbourne, Australia. And it was one of the most beautiful near-death experience accounts I've ever heard. And it was, of course, the exact perfect thing that I needed to hear that was in alignment with what just happened to me in my nine days of retreat. So I reached out to Jacob. He was available. We're available. And uh, he grew up in a very traumatic home. Uh, I heard him say it was Christian in name only, not behavior. Um, he had a lot of trauma in his childhood, and he turned eventually to drugs, was a drug addict, and one night um, he had a drug overdose and had a near-death experience. And Jacob, if you don't mind, if we could just start on the day of your event and pick up from there, would that be all right? No worries. Thanks for having me. Um, so, yeah, I will cut straight to it. So, I... Uh took a little too much uh, what I was taking um, I've been there done that plenty of times with with ODs and you know uh, this was a little bit different this time um, I found myself in a dark space in a, in a void and this energy came into the void with me and this energy was very soothing and very healing and it was like just just what I needed. Uh, and it was very powerful energy, but it was like the power of this energy was perfectly balanced with the love. It was perfectly balanced. And I was just, I was into it. It was just, energy was just embracing me and I welcomed it. And after a while, I, I started to realize something familiar about this energy. I know this, and whatever this is, I know it from somewhere. And I scanned through my whole life trying to find it. And it took me about one second to scan through my entire life, and I couldn't find that energy. But I was able to scan back further, and I was able to see before I was born. And I remember this energy from before I was born. And this energy was God's energy. I recognized this energy as God. And that God was, was, hug was hugging me and was loving me in that very moment. And in that realization that it was God, it was like, I realized just how powerful this energy was. And this energy was like all the power in all of the universes combined. All the universes are running on this energy. And it was contained within this one being, and this one being was holding me. And because the power was so great, I was intimidated by the energy. It was so powerful, obviously, beyond anything you can comprehend how powerful this energy was. But the power was perfectly balanced with the love. And so I had a choice to make that I could either choose to be afraid of the power or I could choose to fall into its love. And I chose to fall into its love. And the moment I decided to just fall into it, it took me out. God took me out of this void and I was in this other dimension. And this other dimension looked like space. But, you know, you can see millions and billions of stars everywhere, but the stars seemed conscious and alive. And there were all these colors within the stars and I, I was seeing colors that I'd never seen before. And it was just so beautiful. Like there's nothing you see on earth that 
can even come close to how beautiful these stars looked. And these stars, I, I didn't see them as stars. I saw them as souls because they were conscious. They were conscious beings. But all these souls, in, in my understanding at the time, they were also part of God. So I've got God with me and God was, I can feel God's energy, but God is invisible. But I can see these souls and these souls are conscious, but somehow they're also a part of God. And this whole dimension, this space that I'm in is also God. And I know it's confusing to talk about it, but that was just how it seemed to me at the time that all of it was God. And God started to gather these souls together. And it just started to create the most beautiful art pieces you've ever seen with them. He's gathering together. And it was just, it was a lot like when Buddhists create, uh, I think it's uh, mandalas. And they create the mandala and then they wipe it out. But the contents of it are still there. And then they would, he would make it again instantly, something else. And he would wipe it out and he would create something new. And it was just happening over and over. And every time he would create something new, it was so beautiful that I felt like it was going to kill me from how beautiful it was. Like I was going to die from astonishment and, and then he'd wipe it out and then I could breathe oh. and then he would make something new and, oh, and he just kept doing it and he was enjoying it. And he was sort of telling me like, you just kick back and relax. I'm putting on a show for you, young man. I want you to enjoy it. And he enjoyed serving me. He, he just wanted me to accept the experience without resistance, you know? And then he picked me up and we started to fly through everything. And as I'm flying through this space, God is by my side and I can experience the beauty of each soul as I'm going past it. I can feel the energy of each soul and how beautiful each soul looked. And I'm experiencing all this at the speed of light. And as I'm flying, it also feels at the same time like I'm flying underwater because there's a physical feeling to, there's an inertia. The inertia, I'm flying through love, basically. I can feel the love physically as I'm flying through it. And as my speed is increasing and increasing, I'm absorbing more and more of the love and I'm absorbing the beauty of each soul that I'm going past. And it's all happening at the same time. And the speed is increasing and increasing and increasing. And it's getting to a point where I'm going to burst. It's too much for me to handle. And I start, I mean, in my experience, I'm still in a human body there as I'm experiencing all this. And I'm starting to feel a little bit of fear now, like, oh, I'm feeling destabilized. I'm about to fall apart. It's too much. It's too much, God. It, God is too much. And as I start feeling like it's getting a bit dangerous, we stop. And we stop in front of a giant skyscraper. Skyscraper, like, you know, just a rectangular skyscraper, tower type of thing, like what you would see on Earth, except it's made out of the same light as the souls are made out of. Made out of beautiful colors, and the colors are constantly changing. It's dynamic, and I'm looking up. And I can't see the top of this tower. It's, it's that high. And I'm there and God just says, all right, we're going to go to the top of this tower. I say, all right. So we start flying up this tower. And again, the speed is increasing and it's increasing and it's increasing and it's increasing. And as I'm getting to the top, I'm like, oh, that's it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die too much, too much, too much. And he took me to in, within a whisker of what I was able to handle. And we were at the top. And I was like, oh, that was close. That was close. But I'm glad I'm still here. I'm keeping my myself is still here. I was glad. I still felt like I was alive. Because I thought I was going to die. And I took a breath. And I walked to the edge of this tower that I was on and I looked out and I could see the sea of lights, the sea of souls. And 
It's a beautiful view. This view just, just mind blowing. But at least I wasn't flying at the speed of light anymore, so I could relax a little bit. All right. And I'm just looking out at it and just taking it all in, and God's on my side. And God, with his vibration, telepathically tells me, now you're going to fly through all of that. And then I was like, God, if I fly through that, I'm dead for sure. I barely survived coming up this tower. And there's a lot more of that than there was of this. So if I fly through all that, I know I'm dead. And God said, yes. I was like, what? I mean, I thought God was going to say, oh, don't worry, you'll be all right, you'll be fine. No, he just said yes. I was... And then I was confused because God is so powerful. He's so loving. He's so wise. And he was so calm. He was just perfect calm. And... He didn't try to tell me you have to go through. He's just like, that's what's next up to you, that kind of a thing. And as I'm thinking about what's going on here, he's perfectly calm, letting me make my decision. And I thought, all right, considering how powerful and how calm and how wise and how loving God is, he obviously has my best interest at heart. And I trust God. I trust God more than I trust myself. So if he says, go through it like it's a good thing, all right, I'll do it. I trust you. And God picked me up, and it was like he picked up a paper airplane. And he just gently threw me off of this tower, and I started to glide. I started to glide down towards the sea of lights. And at first it was easy, and it was beautiful, man. I'm seeing every soul that I'm going past and having a brief vibrational interaction with them as I go past each soul and absorbing their beauty. And, and then the speed starts increasing and increasing and increasing, just like before, and I'm getting to my breaking point. But this time, I know, okay, this breaking point is nothing to fear. God said to get past this breaking point. I feel like I'm going to die, but I trust that something happens after that, which is good. I'll go with what God said. And so I'm going. And as I get past my breaking point, I can feel the skin on my face is getting pulled off of me, peeling off. And the muscles are coming off. And the bones are coming off. And every layer of my human identity is coming off me. And each layer that comes off feels like a tight shoe that is finally off. And all the trauma I had experienced within my life was contained within those layers. And each layer that came off, when the trauma came off, one after the other, and I'm feeling better and better after each layer comes off. And then I get down to my final layer. I knew it was my final layer. And I thought, when this final layer dies, when it dissolves, I'm dead. There's nothing left after this final layer. And I'm going and I'm waiting. It's taken a while and keep flying. And I'm like, what's with this layer? This layer doesn't dissolve. This layer is completely unaffected by what I'm experiencing right now. What is this layer? And then God stopped me and he picked me up. And I was like a little grain of sand in his hand. And God showed me what he was looking at from his point of view. And I could see something that looked like a little white light. And he said to me, no matter what you've been through and no matter what you will go through, all of that will fade away. The only thing that remains is this. This is eternal. This is who you really are. Remember this. And then he rolled me out of his hand like a little marble. And I just rolled out of his hand and I joined the rest of the sea of lights. And I became one with them. And we became one unified being. 
we breathed as one, we felt as one, we were one with God and God was one with us. And it felt like home. It felt like peaceful bliss. There was, I, I struggled to find the words to describe how it felt to be one with those sea of lights, to be one with everyone. I merged with the infinite. And I was, I felt like I was there for eternity. I mean, there was no sense of time, but I guess there was because eventually God picked me up back out of that sea of lights. And as he picked me up, an image materialized next to me. And it was an image of this human body that I'm now in, back on earth, passed out. And he told me, now you have to go back. And I was like, man, how am I supposed to go back to that after this? How can I go from being here, going back to that? The contrast is too much. And God said, it's okay. And when he said, it's okay, the vibration within that, what I absorbed at that time, he was saying to me, I don't judge you for what you've turned into. I understand you. I accept you as you are. And I accept whatever happens to you when you go back. There's nothing that can change my love for you and how I accept you. It's okay. And that was healing for me because I didn't accept myself that way. I judged myself all the time, but God didn't. God loved me and accepted me as I was. And I said, okay, but when I go back there, and if I remember all this, I'm going to have to tell everyone about this place. They're not going to believe me. They're going to think I'm crazy. Uh, and then... I remembered my cousins and my best friends and stuff. And I said, oh, and I started naming them. Oh, my cousin, Mark and Marina and my best friend, Jason. And can you give them this love? If you can give it to them, then they'll believe me. Can you show them this love? And then God said, well, that's what you're there for. I said, me? What do you mean? How am I supposed to give them all this love? This love is too much. I can't possibly give them all this love. And then God said, well, you can ask me for help. You can ask me to help become an outlet for this love, be a conduit for this love. And I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because back on earth, I was doing everything with my ego. I was trying to love with my ego and do everything. And he's saying, I can just ask and Oh, yeah, the energy passes through. Oh, yeah, I get that. I, okay. All right. Yeah, I'll do that. But it seems so easy from up here. When I go back to Earth, I'm just going to, I feel it. Like, I know I, I'm a drug addict. I'm just going to go back into the drugs, and the depression, and feeling suicidal, and all this stuff. I, I feel like I'm just going to go back to all that. And oh, I don't want to lose touch with you again. And then God said, I am you. Hold on a second. What do you mean you are me? You're too powerful to be me. You can't possibly be me. And then God took a moment. And out of the center of my forehead, shot out a giant golden eye. And it was huge. And this golden eye was looking back at me. And I was confused. This eye is coming out of my head and it's looking back at me. Is this my eye looking at me? Or is this God's eye looking at me through me? I, I don't know what's what anymore. And I'm trying to figure it out. And then God said, I am viewing your life through you as you. You and I are one. And then he sent me back.
that was my near-death experience. That's a doozy. So Jacob, you have no way of knowing how many of the aspects of your experience are so fully aligned with the teachings that we participate in every week and uh, the experiences that many of us have had uh, just in spiritually transformative experiences. And I'm struck by so many of the aspects of your um, what you went through. Um, that last part where you said he's experiencing life through me as me or through you as you. We talk a lot about that, the divine here through, with and through and as us. And uh, I just, I am so thrilled that you embodied that experience, that it isn't, um, you know, a studied knowledge, but it is an, ex a, an embodied experience of it. It's just so special. And uh, in the interview that I watched, um, Jacob had noted that while he calls God he, God transcends gender. Obviously, all of us know that. He just, he said he can't call God it because it doesn't feel right. Um, so he just used the, the pronoun he, but it really didn't have a gender at all. So I want to, I have several comments that I want to make, but let's open this up. If it's okay with you, um, Jacob, is it okay if we ask questions from the audience here? Good. One thing that really um, jumped out at me is, is sort of, uh, well, there were so many things, <laughs> but one of the, the first things was when you were talking about how you chose, when you had the um, choice of choosing love or fear, um, when it came to experiencing that amazing balance of the, of the power and, and the love. And I was just wondering if you had any insight into what kind of um, inspired you to jump into the love rather than um, the fear, because it sounded like you had a lot of fear in your life. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'm both, like neither choice really seemed wrong at the time because the power was just crazy. I mean, you, you can't imagine what kind of power that is. Um, but I could feel the love as well. And the love was just amazing. And honestly, I think it was just kind of like, I mean, it's, it's not the most spiritual answer, but I was an addict and addicts want to feel good. Love <laughs> feels better than fear. So I don't care if the love kills me because that was part of what, like, I don't even know if it was two different things. It, to be honest, it was like, I feel like in this, when I'm in the state of like duality in this world, I separate the love and the power. But on that side, it kind of felt like the same thing. The love was the power and the power was the love. So for me to fear, it was it didn't really make sense, you know. It, but yeah, I, I just want to feel good all the time. So I just chose the love. That's it. <laughs> Brilliant. Enough. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, it's so simple. But I think that's a really profound truth, actually, that we all just want to feel better. We all just want to feel good. So yeah. thank yeah. you. And thank you for sharing your story. I also just want to point out, um, we didn't mention here, that Jacob's experience isn't that long ago. It was only October, 2021. And for those of you who know how long it takes to integrate a near-death experience, that's really early in the process. That's less than 18 months ago. And it used to be, I don't know if this is true anymore, but they used to say that it takes on average seven years to integrate a single near-death experience. And so <clears throat> having been through all of the waves of confusion and bliss and uh, struggles of integrating these events, um, I know what kind of raw stage he's still in. And in his interview, I heard him talk about all of 2022 was very much just sort of the dying off of the ego bit by bit, but he was still, and maybe you want to talk about this a little bit, Jacob, he was still chasing that high, going back to the drugs, trying to chase that high again and trying to reconnect. Um, so do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, would that be okay, Jacob? Yeah, yeah. So when I got back, um, the first few days I was, I mean, you can't imagine what it did to me. Like I, I could feel the bliss of it and also the agony of not being in that place anymore. And also my mind playing tricks with me, like 
was that a real experience or was that a drug trip? But I'd taken drugs enough times to know that that wasn't a drug trip. Drugs don't do that. I'd never taken drugs and thought I was talking to God. Drugs are barely predictable. Um, there's not really, you know, it's pretty rare that people take drugs and think they spoke to God and then it changed their life, you know? And uh, I knew that it had changed me um, very early on, but I did want to go back there. So, um, you know, next time I had my pay come through, I, I went and I bought the same drugs and did do exactly the same thing at the same way and played the same music and all that. And I was just like, all right, we're going back there. And I just I had an awful, awful time on the drugs. And then I did try it again. And I nearly died the second time, like, you know, vomiting, like on, you know, stuff coming up and couldn't breathe. And, and I was like, you know, I was like barely able to breathe. And I was like, come on, God, you should have let me come through this time, you know, like, and then I started to feel, I mean, for the first few months, I was, I was crying every day. And it was like, sometimes it was tears of bliss. And sometimes it was tears of agony. And sometimes it was both at the same time. And it was brutal for me because I was like, well, what can I do now that's going to, I mean, when you have an experience like that, what, what has earth got to offer you? There's nothing. So of course I chased, tried to get back there with the drugs. I thought that was the best I could get. And, uh, and now, I, now that didn't even work for me. Now I didn't even enjoy it anymore. And I always started, I, I didn't give up. <laughs> I started drinking and smoking and, and snorting things all day, every day. All my money was going to that. And, and it was like, it was severe. And I was, I was a mess and I got really angry with God. I was raging at God for a lot of 2022. Cause I was like, how can you let that happen to me? And I told you, I said, I don't want to come back to this and go back to the drugs. And, and what, and all you tell me is it's okay. And look at this, this is not okay. I'm sorry, this is not okay, you know? and it's the rough thing to deal with it really was um but that was you know that was part of it is, is like okay what has the earth got really to offer us that's really going to sustain us and like when you get a taste of that there's nothing on earth that does it anymore and so i had to start going on the journey within to find the vibration of god within me that that, that divine place that you you were at mary um that you spoke of and it's, it's funny, you know, like God put people in my life, experiences in my life to show me, to guide me along the way and to show me that you don't have to fight what's happening. And I kept having this thought, this image beamed into my mind. I was seeing myself as I was flying and all my human layers were coming off. And I kept feeling this message coming through saying, this is what's happening now. Obviously, it's not quite as fun when it happens on earth, um, at least not till you go through it. And I'm still going through it, obviously. It is still raw. Um, but yeah, it's I, I I I didn't have a healthy ego before. I didn't have a good life before. So I guess that's part of what's helping me integrate it faster. Because I'm like, well, I'm not really leaving that much behind, really. Well, I enjoyed video games more before than I did after. Things like that. It's just basic stuff. Oh, I enjoyed driving a car fast. I enjoyed fighting. I enjoyed doing this sort of stuff. This, this, it's not really that much to compete with in my previous life. So it's easy to leave that behind and just go for and be like, all right, let's get this all off and let's get back in here and reconnect with that goodness inside. And, uh, and yeah, and, and God sort of met me halfway, a lot like the story of the prodigal son, you know, I started saying, all right, I'll come, I'll go, I'll go along this road back to my rightful place where I came from. And God met me halfway and ushered me along and, has made it a lot easier for me and i think um meeting all you guys and, and mary and all of this this is all part of it for me so thank you and so now um you no more drugs and you're sober and all of that stuff yeah yeah well I'm apart from coffee but yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly um all right did you have a question Jacob, I, I'm just blown away. I'm so grateful you chose to come here today and to be with us and to share your story and you know, before you even started to speak, I started to feel that energy coming through. And as you began to describe the souls and the light and the way that they were connected, I've had an adjacent experience to that. And it was so real. And it just, as you spoke, the power of that came back through and back out and as the one. And I just wanted to really thank you for doing that. 
and for taking that time to just really open to that energy and to all of us. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'm really um, happy to hear that um, a lot of people can relate to some of the things that I experienced and they can, you know, tell me about what they've experienced and it helps. It does help me with integrating it because I don't want to be the only person who experienced things like this. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to hear that. Um, and actually that was one of the big reasons why I wanted Jacob to come and share because there is such energy in his story and uh, I wanted that transmission for all of us. But I also wanted, and I want to be very clear about this, I wanted him to come here to connect with us, with this field that we have, so that we could connect him, that we could ground him, that we could love him and cheerlead him. Because it is, again, he's in a very early stage. This, And I speak from somebody, uh, Jacob, you don't actually know this, but I speak as somebody who's confusion and uh, devastation in not being able to reconnect or make sense of things led to a serious suicide attempt 10 years after my experiences started. So I know how important it is to be connected and grounded and to know that people relate to you and that your story matters. Um, so that's that was my intention in bringing you here is for all of us to benefit in the various ways. You have a question? Uh, oh yeah, Jacob, that it was just, I was absolutely so deeply touched by that and could just feel it. And yeah, my question, um, I'm curious about the part where you were just stripped down to the core of just the light and noticed that there was still something there. I'm just curious if you had any sense of like the qualities of that. I think you mentioned witness. So did you experience like a sense of, did it feel like awareness or do you have any way of, you could describe what you felt in that? Uh, I felt unlimited and connected to everything and not weighed down by anything. And there was no sense of identity i was nobody and because i was nobody i was everybody and there was still something about that that was still a little bit of me like my own unique flavor just like every soul in that place none of them looked the same but they were all equally beautiful and they were dynamic they weren't fixed as one color the colors were constantly changing and but every every soul there had its own sort of unique vibration you know and and I had my own unique vibration and but when I was stripped down to that core yeah it was just I was sort of more focused on how good it felt because all my life literally from birth I was traumatized you know I nearly died at birth and so and all my life I've just been in pain and that was my first time to not be in pain that I can remember anyway. Um, yes. So that's that was the thing that I was most sort of, you know, experiencing at the time. But yeah, I was no one. Uh, I was no one and I was everyone at the same time. I was I was unlimited. I, 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 do, I don't know how to put words to that, but I'm sure there are, you know, a lot of people who have experienced enlightenment in the past who you know, maybe they would say the same thing, you know, it, and it's not that I'm enlightened now. No, it was a temporary enlightenment. And as soon as I was back in my body again, I was back with all the layers again. But I got to experience it for a little bit and know that that's something to work towards and to not give up. You know, so. What other questions or comments? So you, you spoke briefly about how things have changed for you since you've come back, you know, the, um, you know, video games or, you know, uh, the drugs, that type of thing. How do you, do you get any sense at the moment about how your life is going to change? You know, for example, you know, Mary has become um, this wonderful teacher for us and, and has these saxons and, and shares her, her knowledge and her books and her, and her you know, podcasts and other ways. Do you, I don't know, have you had any time? I know that's super early and it's, you know, <laughs> you probably don't know, but I just thought I'd ask if you had any inkling about, you know, first of all, how your life is changing now and how it might change in the future. Yeah, um, I know for sure I'm supposed to 
to help a lot of people and teach teach people um not so much teaching people like theory and rehashing things but just telling my story and allowing people to take from it what they can um i was always a seeker before i was always you know, uh, even though i had a drug problem i was still like meditating all the time and trying to find god and i'd go through phases you know for a while i was a Hare krishna for a while i did transcendental meditation and you know and, and i explored every religion and I, I took it seriously and every time i went into something i thought all right this is the one this is the one that's going to fix me and every external thing every external technique none of them fixed i had to you know and it was like i i genuinely had nothing before and so it was very easy for me to leave behind everything i had to go towards the light but i had my blockages somewhere and you know there's certain things that you don't know until you know and that's what this nde showed me because just before my nde i'd given up i'd completely given up on healing and i thought i'm just i'm just a drug addict and there were, it was stupid for me to try to heal and to get better and to thinking that i could become one with god and all that that was dumb i'm just a drug addict and i'm going to end up homeless and i'm going to die young uh, that's what that and when I came to that acceptance, I feel like because I accepted myself as I was, because to be honest, that kind of was the truth of my situation at the time. And it was almost like, like, where do you draw the line between giving up and accepting who you are? And when I just decided to get into that, I was just like, that's it. I, this is who I am without any pretense. I had my NDE within that same week. And And then when I come back, it's like, okay, I don't have to try to become the thing that I know I will become eventually, you know? So what you're saying is like, what do you, I feel like I'm going to end up being a teacher. I'm going to be something similar to what Mary is right now, but I'm not there yet. I'm just at a place where I can tell my story and, and that's, I'm, I'm content with that for now. And things are unfolding gradually. And I don't want to know what the future is. I just want to, I don't want it to distract me from what's happening right, right here, right now. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I want to say something on that note. There's a certain kind of trauma that those of us who have these very big experiences can have happen when we start to tell our stories publicly. And Jacob and I were actually, we had a call earlier today, and we were talking a little bit about this that suddenly people think you have all the answers or people want to know why you got there and they can't and they've been trying all this time or somebody's loved one committed suicide and theirs they were successful why did you know how come that happened or can you heal my child or can you like suddenly people look to you and think that you need to answer like big questions about life or, or whatever and we don't have those kinds of things just from our experiences there's there's an evolution into coming into being able to um, speak to others or meet others where they are and understanding what we know and what we don't know yet and so I just want to say that for your benefit, Jacob, of, you know, good for you for taking your time. I remember um, back in 2016, I was interviewed on Buddha at the gas pump and Rick Archer at the end of the interview. This was, I didn't know anything about anything. It was my very first public interview. And Rick at the end of the interview says, so, you know, what's ahead for you now? A lot of people in your kind of situation become teachers or guides. And, and in my head, I'm like, oh my God, speak the teacher. Like I know I don't, I'm not qualified for that. There's no way. Like it seemed so foreign to me. It also felt like, oh my God, that's way too much responsibility. I don't know that kind of stuff. I don't even, I don't have any credentials. What about that? But then eventually it just sort of evolved that it was the next thing for me to do, to start doing private consultations, to start doing, you know, more workshops or that sort of stuff. So it will it will make itself known when the time is right, when it is coming through you and you're not the one producing it, right? Or, or making the plan. So good for you for taking your time with that because it, it really does help avoid the trauma of trying to be too much to everybody. Yeah. Um, all right. Hi, Mary. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jacob. It's so fun to be back here with all of you. And Jacob, I just wanted to thank you. That was just, this is, 
has been one of the most beautiful, powerful, meaningful things I've ever experienced. And I feel like I'm going to keep it with me. And I can't wait to watch a video probably many times. So I was moved by so many parts of it. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing this with us. I loved that feeling of you flying by the souls and having that energetic exchange and you said you absorbed the love and I felt that they absorbed your love too right it was like both right or did you just feel you were absorbing I actually never thought of that but that's the first I felt one. that and then guess, when you yeah. when you talked about being just your light your soul and merging with all the souls and that that oneness and that oh god amazing so thank you something to think about now did they absorb my i, don't, I was not even <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that i'm gonna have to ask them when i cross back over again <laughs> oh jacob i echo what everyone else has said thank you so much for sharing it and i'm curious if you um have noticed any little shifts in the quality of your interactions here on earth with the people that come into your awareness or the challenges that come your way or just curious? Yeah, I'm definitely much more sensitive to people's energy, um, but at the same time, very accepting of their energy. Um, just like God was very accepting of me, mm -hmm. I have to be very accepting of others. And mm -hmm. I, find it, I find that however I treat other people, I'm treating myself directly. So, for instance, there was one guy um, that I was talking to a while ago. Um, I bumped into him. Something was happening within me. I was going to go one way, and I felt this vibration telling me, not go walk this way. And I went, and I saw this guy, and he just started talking to me. And he was, um, this guy was, he had a lot of scars all over his face and his head. He had been in a really nasty car accident, um, and he was supposed to die um or at least become a vegetable and and against all odds you know he's walking and he's talking but he speaks you know you can tell he's he's, he's brain damaged from the experience and people aren't treating him very well and he was he just jumped on me just like hey like you know and i found that with a lot of people like children animals uh, people who are brain damaged people who don't really have much of a filter are very drawn to my energy almost immediately um and i i welcome it just like God taught me how to how to treat others, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I feel what they're feeling. And that this guy, you know, his name is Miguel. Miguel was so thankful that I was just treating him like a fellow human, and I wasn't going, "Oh, he looks weird," or "He talks funny." I was just, I was there with him, and we were vibing. And we were vibing so well, and he's telling me his story, I'm telling him mine, and we're just getting along. And he, I can feel what's happening within him. And as it's happening within him, it's happening within me mm -hmm. at the same time. And so there's not really much boundaries anymore. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess, a pretty significant shift to how it was before, before I was very closed up and withdrawn. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I'm curious also about how, when you ask God to, could you do this for my friends so they also all get it? And God said, is going to happen through you um, in the reality of your life. How has your French, how, how have your network of friends accepted the new you? And have you noticed changes in that dance also with them and that interchange of, of living and loving together? Yeah. Um, so the first guy who I mentioned to God, his name is Mark. Mark, my cousin, who um, he lives in the States. Um, he's been very, it didn't go as smoothly as I thought it would. Um, there's no happy story there. He'd actually went the other way and he kind of rejects me now. Um, and a lot of these people did. And I didn't, I don't know if I was, I don't know why from their perspective or whatever, but because I've changed, they, a lot of them haven't been able to accept the, the new me. And I think that is something that like from God's perspective, that's happening all day, every day with billions of people with him, you know, uh, or her, call God what you will. Um, and so that's part of understanding this is that a lot of the time 
our love does get rejected um, or God's love is rejected all the time. And But for me, I see it as part of my training because there is going to be a lot of people who try to put me down and try to, you know, pull me back into my traumatized ego pain body and to stand tall through it all and keep my heart open has been a real challenge. And so I don't, I don't judge them. I don't put them down for rejecting me. I just see it as like, this is part of my training and this is the role you've decided to take in my life. And when you're ready, I know you'll come back around again because at the end of the day, there is no choice but to, to love. Uh, right. Everyone will come there at some point. Right. Well, um, Jacob, we're at a time where we're really being called to live in our truth. And uh, for those of us who know a deeper truth, um, we simply become a reflection of possibility for others. But if people aren't ready for it, there's nothing we can do. They're not ready. Uh, they're in a different place with their truth. And that's okay. As you said, it's part of the learning process. It's part of what we're here to, uh, to understand. So you're up next, babe. It just There's such beautiful things that are said. I will uh, be listening to this many times too. I mean, you just said, again, and God showed me how to treat others by the way he was treating me. And it's like, oh, just such beautiful gems, but the wisdom is uh, radiant. Thank you. Um, you know, one of the, my favorite gems that he said, and I, this is what I picked up on immediately in the, the Jeff Mara podcast was um, when he was like, how, how, how am I going to do all that down there? Uh, or I, I want you to give them that love. And God says, that's what you're there for. Oh, so good. Ah, just chef's kiss. It was so good. So good. All right. You're up next, buddy. Thank you for being with us tonight, uh, Jacob. For me, what really comes through in your story is the simplicity behind acceptance. I look at myself and, you know, so often we're on this search for something better, which implies there's something lacking. And God's having an experience through me. And he's loving every moment of everything I do or say or represent. And it's, it becomes all experience. But just the simplicity of that acceptance, just accept who I am and what I am. Is such is such a profound reminder for me. I thank you again. No, thank you. You you make a great point, um, and that's something that I I had to integrate, uh, especially last year. You know, when I was going through it all, and just as you said, you you said it perfectly. You know, like God is experiencing this through me, and I've got to accept it, and that's all good. Um, so yeah, thank you. You 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 summed that up very well. So thanks. Um, I did want to just say a couple of things. One of the things you said here tonight that you didn't say in, in Jeff's uh, podcast uh, was a line that I just really loved. You said, he was enjoying serving me when he was showing you all of that, this creations, the art that was so beautiful. And he's like, just chill out and just watch the show. I'm doing this for you. And he enjoyed serving me. What a lovely what a profound statement. It's very different than the religious version of God I was taught about growing up. He was he would have just sent me straight to hell and not thought about me again. Um, that was what was just so amazing. When I got back, I was like, wow, okay, it was very different, but it makes so much sense, you know, that you know, it just it, to me it was a lot like you know, a parent with their child, you know, and enjoying making the child laugh and, and entertaining the child. And, you know, it's just as you're providing that service to the child, you enjoy it. You're absorbing the love you give to the child as it flows through you, you know. And uh, this is the exact same kind of thing. And this is exactly the same. And, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Mm. You know, um, Jacob, you've said several times, and you you obviously talked about uh, in your experience, just this again and again, absorbing all this love, just absorbing in that, especially in the other dimensions, just absorbing all that exquisite levels of love. And so in your integration now, all of that is still just soaking in, soaking in, soaking in. And I hope you understand that as you're absorbing that 
so are we. Like it's being absorbed into the collective. It's not just you. You understand that you're like, you're this vessel through which all of the collective is getting the benefit of that. So you're not in this just Jacob King having to do all this work, right? You're just, you're still part of all of this beautiful collective field. And that's part of what we're doing tonight is to ground you in that connection. And uh, I just, I'm, I just can't tell you how deeply, profoundly I celebrate that for you, but also recognize um, that it's a big fucking challenge. It is glorious to have it, but it is profoundly destabilizing. It's, there's no way around it. It's profoundly jolting uh, to all senses of life. I appreciate you saying that um because I am trying to connect with with others and to ground myself in this as well just like you said and it's not easy because a lot of people reject my experience and you know some of them pretty harsh and trying to shut me down and all that and I don't want this to be just for me it's, that would be very isolating I want this to flow into everybody else you know I want it to flow through me into others and and to raise others as well and um if people reject it like it's all good but i'm sure some people are looking for it and those are the people who are, who are showing up right now so yeah thank you yeah you're welcome and you know on that note when when god said just ask for help and you know you're you can be the outlet and how different it is to think about oh i'm just you know, the vessel through which things are happening, I don't have to do it. So we talk about this in terms of the being versus the doing, that um, it's not about what we're doing, it's about what we're being, no matter what we're doing, right? And so the being is just allowing that divine presence here through and as us, so... All right, thank you all for joining. It's so good to see you. I'm so very happy to reconnect with you. Jacob, a thousand thanks, my friend. Hope to see you again. And uh, our time together will be of benefit to all beings. Namaste, namaste.